My name is Ashley. I work here at Springbrook Farm, Farms for City Kids, in the dairy barn and in the calf barn. Uh, I'm standing here with one of our Jersey cows. That is the breed of cattle they are. We have them here on this farm because the Jersey cow's milk components are ideal for making cheese. And here at Springbrook Farm, we make really yummy cheese. The Jersey breed is one of the top five dairy breeds, um, second to Holstein. So Holsteins are the most popular and most recognizable by looks because they're the big black and white cows. And they're popular because they make the most amount of milk out of all the dairy breeds. So their milk mostly goes into fluid milk production, which would be the milk that you buy in the store in your gallon jugs. Where Jersey cows, most of their milk because of the components in their milk, and components would be butter fat and protein, and the ratios they have are higher. So the higher butter fat makes it better for cheese production. The other unique thing about jerseys is you see, as you kind of look down the line, that they can be a lot of different colors. So here at this farm, based on what we feed, which is dry hay and grain, our cows average about 50 pounds per cow. Uh, that, because that's an average, some cows make more and some make less. Our top producing cow for this month made 95 pounds of milk, so almost double our herd average. We measure it in pounds and not gallons, because uh, it's the standard unit of measure. There is about just over eight pounds per gallon over six gallons of milk they're making a day. You want to think about it in terms of gallons and what you might have in your fridge. On this farm, we milk our cows twice a day and so that we're able to show people how to milk cows in the afternoon, we milk them early in the morning. Another reason we milk them early is for the cheese makers. They need a certain amount of time to bake the cheese for the whole day. eat about 100 pounds of food a day and about 40 gallons of water a day. It's about a bathtub if you need some reference. Cows have a very coarse tongue. It's almost like a cat tongue. It's a little sandpapery. That way it's easier for them to pick grass. And then inside her mouth, cows only have bottom teeth on the front of their mouth. And the top of it is called a dental pad. That way they can munch on the grass and rip it to chew it and eat it. So if you're ever afraid a cow might bite you, technically they can't because they only have teeth on the bottom in, their, in the front of their mouth. Then they have their nose or muzzle. Then it comes up and this is called the pole. And that would be where the horns would grow from. Uh, at a young age here on this farm, we dehorn them, uh, which means we um, remove the horns so that they don't grow. Uh, it's a safety measure for the cows in the herd and also for us uh, people that are here working with the cows. Then we have their neck. This little flappy part is called the brisket. These are her front legs. At the bottom, cows have hooves which are cloven, so it's a two-piece, kind of looks like this, and that's what they step on. They get trimmed twice a year. They grow just like fingernails would, and they come and they take a little bit off of the sides and the toe part. You can see her belly's nice and full of hay, which is what we like to see, how big and bulbous it is. That means that she's eating a lot, and she's uh, using that to make milk. So what we like here is that we're seeing some ribs. She's not putting a lot of fat on her body. If she's putting a lot of fat on her body, that means she's eating or getting too much to eat and she's not properly putting it into milk production. And then we come back and we got our hips and pins that come down to her rear legs. She's got a nice conformation. So that means that she's gonna do well as a cow through her old age. We like to see that her body's not really breaking down, that her hips and pins are nice and level, and that comes down to a nice 
straight leg to her hop and her back feet, which you can see her cloven hoof a little bit there. Underneath her belly, now that we're kind of low, we see this kind of snake thing moving along the bottom of her belly. This is what we call the milk vein. And we like to see that. That's the blood flow leaving the udder, going back to her heart to restore blood, fresh blood to the udder. And the bigger that is, the more blood flow coming from the udder, which is awesome for us, because that means that cow is putting a lot of energy into her mammary. Her mammary is called the udder. The udder has four of these, which are called the teats. Her udder is divided into four compartments. So there are four teats, and each of them is individual to each quarter of the udder, we call it. So if we only milked this teat, there would be three quarters of her udder still filled with milk. They're not, it's not one unit, they're separate. So this is her tail, and this is used to swat flies in the summer and swat our faces in the winter when we're milking them, which is awesome.